Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Dylan Garcia with another episode of the Never Been Defeated podcast. Give me a second. Yes, we are rolling. Okay, so good. Um, I wanted to take you guys back to some of the stuff that um, I dealt with when it came to mental health. And uh, my wife said it was something I needed to share, you know, because we all got a story. We all got a story. And uh, so in 2009, I'm living in Newport Beach at this time. Met my son's mom, and uh, you know, at the time I was getting really heavily involved with music in the Orange County music scene. I was performing pretty much every weekend with my band. Then I was performing by myself when the band broke up. I met Ronnie, and then it was uh, getting into the recording studio for the first time, like uh, not for the first time, but like with producer and the whole night. And um, uh, you know, I had been dealing with these like episodes that I was having where I'd have these episodes of like psychosis, like paranoia, but like psychosis, like, you know, when you're on drugs, you know, but it's a bad one. And, um, uh, I signed a record deal. And now at this point, these episodes that I was having were happening. It was, I, I was in one and they were happening often, maybe a couple times a year, but I'd be able to go to sleep and I finally would wake up and everything was back to normal. But this time that stuff wasn't happening. I, I started not really sleeping that much. I started thinking about these conspiracies and all this other stuff, thinking like I was bigger than Bob Marley. You know what I'm saying? Like the chosen one. These, uh, uh, what do they call them? Um, grandiose thoughts, you know, these grandiose thoughts. And I was having them and, and um, so we're in the studio and while I'm in a full psychosis and nobody even knows because I didn't talk to anybody about it. My cousin knew I was a little tripping a little bit. Uh, but we're in the studio cutting records. We have Los Fabuloso Cadillacs there, famous band from Argentina. It was the Latin MTV Video Awards going on in LA. So all these Latino um, artists were in town and Los Fabuloso Cadillacs came, Luciano came to my recording session. MTV was actually there and I was in such a crazy mind state that when I had my one shot to like be on MTV, I kicked everybody out of the studio because I was tripping. I got mad at Ronnie. I'm like, dude, I came here to work. You're my like, he was like, dude, I told you this was very important. Kind of messed up, uh, not being in the right right state of mind, and especially when you think there's a conspiracy going on and everyone's out to get you. You know, that's not a good place to be. One of the scariest places I've ever been, and that's why I take my meds and I'm so diligent about making sure I'm good because I never want to go back to that mindset, that that headspace. Or my brother used to say, going down the rabbit hole. And, um, you know, so we end up cutting like three or four tracks, maybe in like a two eight hour sessions. I was just in grind mode. Um, finally get home and I'm getting worse and worse in my mind. Like I'm in another world, man, hallucinating, hearing voices. Like it wasn't fun. And I remember um, I left my place in Newport Beach thinking people followed me from Northern, because I was like, I was just so out of my fucking mind and uh, hallucinating that shotguns were being cocked, like ready, like people ready to kill me. This is all hallucinations going on in my mind. That's what the state of mind I was, man. End of leaving with my dog, Tahoe. Now we walked all the way from uh, Newport Beach to Santa Ana, all the way up there. By, on, we walked all the way up Harvard Boulevard, just me and my dog. He wasn't even, she wasn't even on a leash. And I did that just in case anyone tried to get me that my dog be able to get away because I didn't want anything to happen to my dog. Uh, my son's mom finds me on Harvard Boulevard and takes me to a college hospital. And she didn't know what to do. You know, she'd never, you know, dealt with somebody who like had some, going, going through a mental health episode. And me, I mean, you're living it. You know, there's no way to see outside that perspective. Now I can a little bit, I've learned to manage it, but like, Sometimes you're so wrapped up in these episodes that you can't break yourself back into reality. Yeah, and I'm getting hospitalized at a place in, um, I think it was Santa Ana. Um, back then it was cool because they used to let you smoke cigarettes at the, at the mental hospitals. I know a lot of mental hospitals don't do that anymore. I think they actually gave us cigarettes. Like, and uh, I was there for like five days and uh, my family came to visit me. Everyone's freaking out, but I'm now better because they medicated me. So I finally, they, they, we got a sign, but they thought I was schizophrenic. Well, at first they thought it was a drug-induced psychosis because someone had the idea of saying, oh, maybe he was on drugs, but I was not, not on drugs. You know, they took a drug, like, 
this was all stuff that was going on with me. Some people didn't want to accept that maybe something was wrong and maybe I'd been a little fucking too crazy during my 20s, you know? And even, my, you know, in my 20s. And uh, I'm in the hospital. I'm finally realizing, like, oh, man, this shit that I was dealing with was real. Like, there was something really wrong. And, um, you know, so I end up getting... Diet is a drug-induced psychosis. I get out of the hospital. They gave me meds to take. I take the meds. I'm feeling good, you know, back to myself, like ready to get back to work, ready to get back to this record deal and everything. Like it was just my mind. I'm good to go, you know, and that happened. But then when I had my follow-up visit with my doctor, he's like, well, are you still hearing voices? I said, no, I'm better. And he said, okay, then we need to, we should take you off the medication. They take me off the medication. I'm whacked out again, even worse. Within three days, my son's mom's like, I can't handle this shit. So she takes me to the my doctor's office and I'm like, it's back. I finally, would, I even had the courage to say it's back because it's so fucking crazy that sometimes you can't even distinguish reality. But I just said, it's back. And to see the doctor, they, I, I, I waited. I think I went back there. I was even able to drive and shit, but this stuff is crazy in your mind. Doctor was creepy as fuck. Are you still hearing voice? I'll never forget this guy. And... um Oh, well, maybe something's wrong. We'll put you on this medication. Instead of putting me on the medication that the hospital stabilized me with, this guy thought he was a genius and just assumed that I was schizophrenic and put me on this med called Abilify. Now, I wasn't sleeping again, so I finally got some sleep, but I was still fucking hearing crazy shit and still crazy shit was happening. I see my doctor. I'm like 20 pounds heavier. He's like, oh, maybe get a job. Do this. But it's like, how the fuck are you going to get a job when you're hearing voices and shit, you know? And... I ended up getting a job at a telemarketer that lasted like three or four days. By that time, I, I started getting back. Like, I was, just wasn't good. Like I'm hearing voices while I'm trying to do telemarketing calls, man. I remember I was selling Google ad space or something, making people's businesses at the top um, when people did Google search. And at this point, this is when I started feeling really shitty about myself because I'd already put on 20 pounds. You know, I'm still not well. After I was well when I got out of the hospital, but you know, this doctor thought I was a guinea pig. And some doctors are like that, I'll speak honestly. I haven't had a lot of great doctors. And uh, it wasn't until like four, five, six months, I can't remember. Uh, but at this point, I'm up to like 220 pounds. Big dude, big boy, never been this big in my life. Um, and the doctor, I see the doctor, oh my God, you gained so much weight. I'm like, dude, have you even been paying attention? I've been gaining 20, you know, 20 pounds every, I'm heavier than 20 pounds every time I see you. And I was, you know, I mean, I still consider myself a good looking guy, but when you're thin and fit your whole life, then all of a sudden you explode the 220, you look fucking a lot different. Your face is round, like, you know, and that just happened in such a quick amount of time. I mean, I could have got diabetes because of this doctor and he's, I see him, oh, we're going to put you on this other medication. Um that doesn't have a weight gain, uh, least amount of, least amount of side effect of weight gain. So I try it. It was called Geodon, right? So after I stopped the Abilify, I'm on the Geodon and I finally started getting, getting back to myself. I did. I started, um, playing guitar again. Now in this period when I was on that Abilify being fat, I accepted that I was just going to be fat and sit on the couch. I didn't think anything was, I just, I gave up. I was like, this is what my life came to. All I looked forward to was watching King of Queens on TV. Watch the news all day. I wouldn't get up. I just was in front of the TV. Just like a lot of people, you say, oh, that, that's a cousin. You know what I mean? He's, you know, you go to someone's house, someone's just watching. Oh, that's my, you know what I mean? It was like that kind of situation, man. I was at the lowest point of my life. And just thinking, man, just fat, eating, not caring. Just like, this is what my life came to, man. I changed my phone number. I didn't even talk to anyone from the record label. I didn't want anyone to even contact me. That's how bad I was doing on this Abilify. I had a fucking record deal that I signed, a distribution deal. And uh, I mean, everything was good to go. And then all this happens. But now I'm on the new medication, so I'm starting to feel better. All of a sudden, I'm playing guitar. My son's like, oh, wow, you feeling better? I said, yeah, you know, I actually want to go outside. Didn't even want to go outside for like six months. That's how bad I was. Um, this is in 2010 I'm talking about. So uh, I'm getting better. I reach out to the label. The first person I reached out to, though, was Ronnie. Ronnie was the most concerned about what was going on with me. And I got a chance to link up with him when I was putting all that weight. I was really embarrassed, like, to be around even Ronnie, like, my boy, because I put on weight, like, 
You know what I'm saying? I I, I come from a, a a childhood where criticism there was a lot of criticism, and um, you know it was all love. And then I reach out to the label. I had written like a whole album already within like like a four week span. My cousin Andre comes through. We go down and meet the label. And they're like, man, we love your new stuff. Let's, uh, and the song was called Devil's Playground. I mean, think about it. That's how low I was. I'm writing a song called Devil's Playground, you know? And uh, we were ended up, I ended up going to the studio rehearsing every day, like working on my craft, uh, getting ready to record this track. I ended up recording this guy. Uh, he played drums. I can't remember his name. But we made a pretty sick track. And Ronnie played keys. And then I ended up cutting vocals and the label all did this out of pocket. Like they believed in me that much that they were dishing out money to make this stuff happen. And, um, you know, it felt good to get back. You know, music is so important to me. Music saved my life. You know, music gave me an outlet. And music gave me an outlet besides surfing. Like I could get creative and get into my own headspace with music and be creative. And those times, I look back now, I look back at those times, you know, those, you know, 13, 14 years ago, uh, 13 years ago, and I'm thinking about, I think about, man, look where you came from. Like, look back in the rearview mirror and see where you were. Not to live in the past, but see where you started, see where you came from. This has been a process. Like, it wasn't until 2018 when finally a doctor said, you know what, dude, I don't think you're schizophrenic, man. I think you're just bipolar. And then all of a sudden it was new meds. I was scared to take the meds because I was having these reactions from that geodon because I'd been on it for so long. My, my jaw would clench down and ah, it was the fucking worst thing anyone had ever go through. I never want even that happened to one of my worst. And so my worst enemies, I don't want that to happen. It's called a dystonic reaction. I'm just glad I'm here now to be able to share this story. You know, coming from the guy waiting for King of Queens to be on, not not doing anything. My, my head space, my head is all messed up. My brain's all messed up. I don't want to go outside every, every weird look I get. Like I'm, you know, it's just, it was one of the worst times of my life. And I didn't even dream to be where I'm at today. I had given up. It's just not given up, but accepted, accepted, you know? And, um, Little did I know in 2018, I was going to get another chance. You know, grateful for my wife for sticking around when I wasn't in good mentally. Um, you know, it wasn't until my meds got changed, you know. And um, thankfully, my wife stood by my side. And um, to 2018, I mean, I ended up getting my mental health restored when I had my hip surgery. Like, I had both my hips replaced. But at this point, I was already at my wits with my mental health and... Uh, and the doctor I had, so I asked my surgeon that was going to do my hip in LA if he could get me, um, get me a psychiatrist. And psychiatrist came, man, explained, you know, and next thing I know, they're doing blow work. Next thing I know, I'm on a whole different regimen of meds. And I wake up the next day when they gave me meds that night, back to normal. And it was that, oh, moment, like, oh, man, how long was this episode was going for? So for 2018 forward, not having an episode and really staying on, on point, losing weight, um, uh, being challenging myself so my brain is strong to be mentally strong so I don't ever have to go back to those ways now mental health a lot of people they don't want to get better you know I saw it I lived in a mental health housing complex a, a behavioral health housing complex that you would put your name on a list to get housing I was on the waiting list for like seven years I believe to get finally get the apartment that I lived at before the apartment I live at now prior to that I was homeless bouncing around from, I mean, if you know, if you're from the 805 in Oxnard, man, like even staying at the Flamingo Motel, man. And man, finally getting a chance for my friend Rain. I ended up getting sober. She ended up letting me stay on her couch for like 10 days. She put up on my shit for 10 days, stopped drinking. And these were just decisions I had to make. I mean, it comes down to it. It's just the decision you want to make with your life. Like, you know, do you want to make excuses? Do you want to be that guy sitting on the couch waiting for King and Queens? Or, I mean, do you want to be a guy that you never even met before that was always inside of you waiting to come out, but you just had to make the decision to start making better choices. And that's what I wanted to do with my life. And it's not like I'm special. I'm just a regular guy like everybody else. I just got goals and dreams that I'm chasing. You know, I've given up on a couple full-time, really good paying full-time jobs because I'm not ready. This is, I'm working my life to perform music for the rest of my life. 
to be performing when I'm 50, 60, 70 years old. Like I never got into this game just to try to be cool for a minute. No, like I want to do this as a grown adult when I'm an old man, being on tour, providing for my family, building my catalog. You know, artists that listen to this, man, build your catalog because your catalog is, that's jewelry right there, baby. And coming back from that mental health stuff, you know, it was music that saved my life. And I'm grateful to be here today. I am. I know everyone's life hasn't been easy and I'm not trying to say that I'm special that my life was tougher than yours or anything. I'm just saying like we all got a tough life and sometimes we got to share our story because we inspire other people. My main goal is just to let people know it's okay. Like if you got some kind of, you know, you're dealing with depression, anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia, you know, any of that stuff, man, I, I got to, my heart goes out to you because it's real and we battle every day. I just want to say never give up. This is Dylan Garcia with the Never Been Defeated podcast. I'm out, baby. I've been knocked down, but I've never been defeated. I've been knocked down.